Your iPad comes jam-packed with accessibility features designed to help people get the most out of their device in ways that are personalised to their preferences and needs. I'm Steve, a teacher and tech coach, and I'm here to support teachers and students with getting the most out of their classroom tech. Today, I'll show you the ways that my students and I use iPad's many accessibility features to support learning. Once you start taking advantage of these features, your iPad can help you to connect, create, and do what you love in the ways that work best for you. Later, you'll see how easy it is to create custom accessibility shortcuts and access your favorite features directly from Control Center. So let's get to it. Let's start with speech. These iPad features empower individuals with speech disabilities or anyone who prefers non-verbal communication to connect and express themselves in ways that feel most comfortable. Live speech is a feature that takes your typed words and speaks them out loud. You can find this feature in the settings app under accessibility and a bit further down. On the live speech options, you can turn it on and to enable live speech, you triple click the home button. Once you've turned it on, the keyboard appears and you can type something to speak. It's a pleasure to meet you. Spoken content is a feature that reads any text on your screen out loud. It's here again on accessibility features under spoken content, and there are a few options here to choose from. You can turn speak selection on, which means that a speak button will appear when you select text. For example, I can select this text here and press speak iPhone 16 Pro features a great five titanium design. With you can also turn on speak screen and when you swipe down with two fingers on the top of the screen, you can hear the spoken content. The speech controller can be turned on and off, which uh, turns that on just at the side here and you can keep that available at all times. As you saw before, the highlight content feature is on, which means it highlights the sentence that is being read out loud. You can turn on typing feedback for characters or words and you can of course change voices and language and the speaking rate as well. With vocal shortcuts you can teach your iPad to recognize a custom phrase which you can use to quickly perform an action. Again on accessibility settings it's here vocal shortcuts and you can set that up and it will go through the process so it could be a shortcut to open the camera for example and the custom phrase might be open Camera. Open camera. Okay, and obviously we can add more if we want to. These features offer a personalized experience for everyone. Whether you're blind, have low vision, or simply prefer larger texts, you can customize your display, control your devices, and navigate your surroundings with ease. Okay, first up is the point and speak feature on the Magnifier app. So I'm going to open that up. Now at the moment, the detect option isn't here. We're going to go to settings and here where it says detect, we want it to be shown in the control panel. Done. So now it's here. And if I turn detect on, then you should see that it starts describing. Display and text size are a collection of settings that customize your display according to your personal preferences. So here it is in the accessibility settings, and you can see that there are a huge range of different customizations to choose from, including bold text, larger text, button shapes, and on off labels at the top. You can also reduce transparency of apps, increase the contrast, differentiate without color, smart invert, which reverses the colors of the display, except for images or media, Classic Invert, which just reverses all the colors. Color filters, and you can also reduce the white point and turn on or off auto brightness. So VoiceOver speaks items that are on the screen. You can tap once to select an item, and you can double tap then to activate that selected item. There's a tutorial here available as well. You can do that with or without VoiceOver turned on, and you can see that there are many different aspects that you can explore so that you can learn how to use voiceover. It's a really powerful feature. With motion settings, you can dim flashing lights, pause moving images, and simplify on-screen motion. It's here in the accessibility settings, and you can turn on reduce motion, which reduces the motion of the user interfaces when you get that kind of parallax movement effect. And you can also show 
vehicle motion cues as well. And these dots appear on the, on the screen. So if you're using your iPad in, uh, in a vehicle, in a car, then this helps to reduce travel sickness. As I said, you can dim flashing lights and you can turn off these auto playing settings for images, videos, and message effects. With Zoom, you can enlarge anything on your screen. If we go to Zoom here in settings and turn it on, you'll see the zooming box appear. We can drag that around the screen to zoom into different items that are on there. And you can turn this on or off by double tapping three fingers. Hover text shows a close-up view of text on your screen as you read or write. If I turn it on here in the settings, then when I move my cursor that's connected here, then you can see um, that the description of each item appears at the top of the screen. You can also turn on hover typing, which displays larger text while you're typing. Again, you've got many options here to choose from in terms of the colors and the font style as well. Let's discover a variety of tools for enhancing your hearing experience. Whether you want to improve the sounds you hear or find new ways to connect without relying on sound, there's a solution for you. You can customize audio preferences on your device to suit your needs. And here on the accessibility settings, you can see audio and visual. And on here, there are options for headphone accommodations. You can turn on background sounds to mask unwanted environmental noise, turn on mono audio, add voice isolation, or change the balance from left to right. And you can also turn on the LED flash for alerts. Sound recognition listens for specific sounds and notifies you when they're detected. If I turn this setting on, we can choose the sounds for iPad to listen out for, including alarms, animals, household noises, and people. And as soon as any of those sounds are detected, you'll be notified. There's also an option to add a custom alarm and you can let iPad hear what that alarm sounds like so that it can recognize it in the future. These features help you personalize touch controls create custom gestures, and find the perfect way to interact with your iPad. With voice control, you can navigate your device using voice commands. Here, if I set up voice control, then it takes you through step-by-step -step how to do that. There is also a voice control tutorial. Again, you can have a look through the getting started introduction, editing text, and navigation around your iPad using voice control. It's a really powerful feature. Tap button, open notes, go home, press escape key. With the touch settings, you can customize how you interact with your touch screen and adjust how your device responds to your touch. Here in the touch settings and accessibility, you can turn on assistive touch, which allows you to use your iPad even if you have difficulty touching the screen or if you require an extra accessory. You can customize what the top level menu looks like when you open assistive touch and you can create custom actions below. There are also other settings here like haptic touch for when you press on the display uh, for different lengths of time revealing different menus. You can change that from the default setting from fast to slow and you can test that out in the example below there as well. And there's also an option to turn on and off, tap to wake and shake to undo. With these features, you can simplify your day and find the support that you need. These tools can help you stay focused and manage tasks with ease. With assistive access, you can tailor your iPad and in-app experiences to lighten your cognitive load. As you can see here, it's a distinctive iPadOS experience that makes it easier for people with cognitive disabilities to use iPads independently. It keeps things simple and makes things easier than ever. With Safari Reader, you can navigate the internet without ads, extra buttons or unnecessary distractions. To turn this on automatically, you can navigate to the app section of your settings, go to Safari and scroll down till you reach Reader. You can turn it on for all websites so it works automatically. So now when you open a website that supports Reader, it will automatically open. Guided access limits app access and reduces distractions. Once you've turned on guided access, then you can triple click the home button or the top button to enable it. Once it's turned on, you can lock the whole screen to just this app, or you can choose options including limiting the top button function, the volume buttons, motion, keyboards, touch, 
um, and time limits as well. You can also circle areas on your screen that you would like to disable. And once you've done that, then you can press start. Other powerful features to reduce cognitive workload include dictation to use your voice instead of typing. And that function is always available on the keyboard here so that you can start to speak and it will type what you say. And finally, focus is another valuable tool to explore to reduce distractions, silence calls and block notifications. Once you've explored your favorite accessibility features, you can then add them into Control Center so that you can access them really quickly. In iPadOS 18, Control Center is even more customizable. You can press and hold in Control Center, tap Add a Control, and you can select from a huge range of customized controls. Down the bottom are some of the accessibility features that we've explored today, and you can add those directly into Control Center. For example, sound recognition, and guided access. Remember, accessibility is all about personalization. Don't be afraid to explore these settings further and find out what works for you or your students. With a little bit of tweaking, your iPad can become an even more powerful tool for learning, creating, and connecting. If you have any questions about these accessibility features, or maybe you have a favorite feature you'd like to share, drop a comment below. If you want to know more about iPad's brand new software updates or how you can use Google's new AI features, then take a look at my most recent videos here. Thanks for watching and see you next time.